All right, so there are a few different automated testing strategies that we use as engineers to simulate user behavior. End-to-end -end testing, which is probably the closest to real human testing behavior, evaluates the functionality of an entire application from start to finish. Unit testing focuses on testing individual components or modules in isolation, whereas end-to-end -end testing ensures that all components work together seamlessly as intended. Playwright is a fairly popular library by Microsoft, primarily used for end-to-end -end testing. I am not going to sell you the idea of using Playwright by highlighting all of its features. You are the one who clicked on this video, so I am guessing you want to know how it works. But if you do want to know the features, here you go. Alright, now that you have looked at the features, let's just get started. So I already have a simple React app ready that you can see on the screen. This app has a very basic authentication page and once you are authenticated, you will find a to-do list. There is no such authentication logic here. If I go inside the app component, you will see that all I am doing is checking whether the username is this text user and the password is text password. If that is the case, then I am simply authenticating the user. That's it. I don't want it to be a very fancy, complicated authentication system. All I wanted was a very bare bones application. So yeah, this is what the authentication logic does. When it comes to the actual to-do list, all you can do is add or delete an item. So I'll take you through the to-do list component as well. This is what it does. We have a handler for adding a to-do item and we have a handler for deleting an item. Both of these items are being deleted from a local state. So there is no database as of now, but we'll come to that later. You can clone this application from the GitHub repository that's mentioned in the description. All you have to do is clone this repository and run pnpm install. Once that is done, you can run the application by typing in pnpm dev and that should do it for you. The tools I've used inside this application are pnpm as my package manager, wheat as my bundler. I've sprinkled some TypeScript and Tailwind inside this application, but it's not that significant. So that should not be a problem. The application is pretty straightforward and it should be very easy to understand. If you have any doubts though, do put them in the comments and I'll try to address them as much as possible. So now let's install Playwright. All you need to do is run a single command. It will ask you some follow up questions along the way. But yeah, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So npm. If you have npm as your package manager, it would be npm init Playwright. And if you have yarn, then it's going to be yarn create Playwright. Now it's asking us a bunch of questions. The first question is where we would want to put our end-to-end -end tests. It's going to create a folder for us. I can actually change this to whatever I want, but let me just keep it to the default value, which is tests. It's asking me whether I want the GitHub Actions workflow or now I'll just set it as yes, but we won't be working on it right away. I'll come back to it in, a, in the later part of this series. But for now, let's set it to true. Install Playwright browsers, yes, and now it will set up everything for us. Also, I'm assuming that you already have Node installed on your system before doing this, but if not, do install it and make sure that it's version 18 or above. Now, as you can see here, I've ran this command inside this React application. So whatever modules Playwright is going to install, it's going to install it directly inside this application. So if I open up the package.json file, and go to the dependencies section you'll see that in the dev dependencies we have the playwright test package but if you were to do it in an empty folder it will create a new node project of its own and there you'll have its own package.json file with the playwright test as part of its dev dependencies all right so we have the package installed let's take a look at what all files have been added to our project we have this playwright config file. As with every other config file out there, you'll have some options that will come into factor when you run your tests. You can manipulate the test by changing things inside this file or when you're trying to run the test to the command line. One great example, as you can see here, is this project's property. It's essentially an array with three rendering engines. So if you have one test in your project, there'll be three runs for the same test, one for each browser. If you want to change this, you can pass in an option in the command itself when you're running the test. So again, we'll see that in action later, but 
this config file is the very core of your playwright project and we'll come back to it whenever we want to make changes in our testing environment you'll also find a couple of new folders here so there's a test folder and the test examples folder this first folder is your main test directory inside this config file you'll find the very first option which is this test directory option this is the directory that playwright will scan for any test files for now it will look inside this test directory for any test files but if your project directory structure is different then we can manipulate it if the test files are scattered across the app you can simply add the source folder here instead of this test folder and playwright will run every test file inside the source directory so we can actually do that i'll change this to src i'll move our test folder inside the src folder and now whenever we run the test command playwright is going to look inside the source folder it's going to scan for all test files inside this folder and then eventually run it but actually before running the test let me take you through what it does so we have two tests in here both of these tests are pretty straightforward do not worry about the syntax for now once we start progressing through this series you'll eventually come to know what all utilities you can use to do certain things inside a test so all this test here does is it first navigates to this domain this is playwright's home page so once it's there all it does is checks if the title has playwright in it if that is the case then this test will pass second test here is again pretty straightforward it will again go to the same domain it will check if there's a link with the text get started in it and once it's able to find it it will click on that link this technically should take you to a different page once it's navigated to that page this particular line here will check if there's a heading present on that page with the text installation that's it that's all this second test does so all these things that you see here navigating to a page clicking on a particular link all these things are called actions the expects that you see here you have an expect here which checks whether the title has playwright as a substring there's one more expect here that checks if there's a heading present and the text of that heading is installation all these expect functions that you see are called assertions you'll see a lot of these actions and assertions once we start writing our own tests so yeah we get these two tests out of the box now these tests are great examples as you see a pattern here the pattern is that you land on a page first and then you try to locate a specific element then you attach a condition to this element and it gives you a boolean result that is a core pattern that you would observe in most of the e2e tests so now let's just run the test to run the test suite you have the test command so in case of pnpm it's pnpm exec playwright and then test if you are using npm then it's going to be npx playwright test i also do not want to type this out every time i want to run the test so let me just add this inside the package.json file as a script i'll add a new script here and i'll call it test yeah you can see that all six tests were executed and all of them passed but we only had two tests inside the file the reason why it shows six tests here is because each of these tests ran on three different rendering engines webkit chromium and firefox that's the reason why we see six tests here there's also a follow up command that's being suggested here this command gives you the report for the test that you just ran so let's run this npm it will open up a new browser window and you can see all the tests that were executed the hash title test has been executed three times for different uh, rendering engines and similarly you can also see that the second test has been executed the same way for different engines if you click on any one of these tests you'll see the flow of execution as well there's this before hook section then there are the actual steps that went in inside this test and then there's the after hook section i'll come to what hooks are in later part of this series but in a nutshell hooks let you run operations at different intervals of the text execution timeline so if there's some operation that you see is being repeated in all the tests at the beginning you would use a before all or before each hook and similarly there would be a counterpart that runs after the test so there will be an after all or after each hook 
But yeah, I'll come to that later. Now this same report, by the way, is also created locally in your project folder. You'll see a new folder that gets generated after you run the test. This is this is that folder, Playwright report, and it will have an HTML file. If I open this up uh, in the live server, you'll basically see the same test report that you saw earlier. If any of these tests fail, you'll be able to see the state here. And if you click on the test, it will also show you where exactly it failed and the reason for its failure. Now, just like this test folder, there's one more folder that got created when we were setting up Playwright. That's this test examples folder. This again has a spec file, a test file with a bunch of test cases. These individual blocks look more like real life examples of end to end tests. You can use it as a reference when writing your own tests, but I don't think that will be necessary. So yeah, that's a good enough introduction to Playwright. In the coming videos, we'll look at different tools and utilities and explore how to write our own tests. At some point in the series, I'll also show you how to generate tests by just running the app like a regular user. Trust me, it gets a lot easier. Also, I'll try to keep this short by covering the common features that solve about 90% of the overall use cases. Playwright has a lot to offer, but just like any other piece of tech, 20% of the features solve about 90% of the problems. So yeah, we'll focus on that and maybe a few niche topics here and there. Again, there's a GitHub repository available with specific branches mapped to each video. So part one is going to have a different branch. And similarly, going forward, there will be different branches for each part. I'll link the repository with the specific branch under each of the videos. So you'll be able to track what all changed since the last video. So yeah, do subscribe to the channel for content like this and I'll see you in the next one.